SpaceX, Starbase, Cape Canaveral. You've got questions, we've got the answers. Thanks for tuning in to episode 86 of Lab Padre's SpaceX and Starbase weekly updates. Now let's dig in. Starting off this week, as the sun rose into the Texas sky on Friday morning, the chopsticks once again lifted Ship 25 off its transport stand. After raising it up the tower, rotating it over to the top of the booster and setting it down, yet another full stack of the next Starship launch pair was complete. A short time later, the ship quick disconnect was extended and attached to the vehicle, indicating that the issues seen during the last stack have now been solved. That afternoon saw the ceremonial topping out of Mega Bay 2 as the new building's final roof beam was lifted and installed with a flag and tree on it. Back at the launch site, with stacking operations completed, the test stand tank farm was spooled up and SpaceX began loading propellant into Ship 26 on test stand B. A short time later, fire roared from the bottom of Ship 26 for the first time. The streamlined Starship performed a long-awaited static fire of just one of its three sea-level Raptor engines. Overnight, the launch site LR-11000 crane crawled its way across the launch site to test stand B in preparation for inspections on Ship 26 following its earlier test. Meanwhile, back at the build site, Ship 32's common dome section was moved into high bay as crews continue to push forward on vehicle production. Shortly before dawn, the LR-11000 picked up the ship lifting squid. It was then attached to Ship 26 for support during the vehicle's post-static fire internal inspections. Overnight, Saturday into Sunday, the HLS nose cone was moved from its spot on the far side of the village to a new concrete pad that was recently poured behind Mega Bay 1. Utilizing a rare Sunday closure, SpaceX kicked off a new week with some full stack testing. Booster 9 was partially loaded with cryogenics as Ship 25 watched from on top. Next, the vehicle was briefly detanked. A short time later, SpaceX again partially loaded the booster's propellant tanks and venting could also be seen from the launch tower. Then, after SpaceX had once again detanked the cryogenics from the booster, they initiated a test of the flame deflector system followed by the engine's purge vents. Both of these tests were from the new systems that SpaceX has incorporated following the first integrated flight test. Finally, the day's testing campaign appeared to be finished as Stage Zero spooled back down and returned to its standby status ahead of the road being reopened. On Monday, the LR-11000 crane at the build site was spotted lifting one of the prefabricated elevator shaft sections into the back right corner of Mega Bay 2. On Tuesday, SpaceX stepped up their full stack testing to the next level. Cryogenics were loaded not just into Booster 9, but into Ship 25 as well. This was the first real test of the ship quick disconnect since it was reconfigured following the addition of the hot staging ring. Once both vehicles were fully loaded, SpaceX tested the detonation suppression system. This system was added to the launch mount following the unexpected fireball during one of Booster 7's spin prime tests. Then, following a seemingly successful round of full stack testing, both vehicles were detanked. Hopefully this new push forward into testing is an indication that SpaceX believes their launch license is coming soon. Once detanking was completed, SpaceX performed another test of the flame deflector system. I don't know about you, but I want to know why SpaceX is waiting until after detanking the vehicles to perform the test of this system lately. Knock yourself out in the comments below. That evening over in High Bay, Ship 32 was stacked onto its common dome section. This is the fourth of six sections that will make up the latest Starship. On Wednesday, Chief made another stop by the new construction underway near Raptor Roost. We can see that crews continue to make steady progress on the structural foundations for these new raised buildings. At Sanchez, the ground fabrication building now appears to be nearly weather tight. It seems likely that crews will be wrapping up the relocation of this building in the near future. Chief also caught some odd shaped possible deflectors being loaded onto a flatbed truck for transport. Are these being relocated to another site, or are these obsolete parts and of abandoned design for protecting part of the launch infrastructure? Let us know your thoughts below. 
As crews continued the process of dismantling the air separator, parts of the system's infrastructure were being loaded onto trucks for transport away from Starbase. It is not yet clear if SpaceX is completely done with the hardware or if it is simply being moved to a different location. With the recent rapid expansion of facilities and infrastructure, space at Starbase is becoming increasingly hard to come by these days. Near the Sanchez inventory tent, Chief caught work being done on another one of the new booster engine tanks. The tanks for these relatively new design changes to booster construction will be installed under the chines on a future booster. Once installed, they will be filled with carbon dioxide, which is used to keep the engine compartments purged of combustible gases. Turning around, Chief also caught an additional prefabricated section of elevator shafts. These shafts will be lifted and installed into Mega Bay 2 as the new building continues to push closer to being usable for vehicle production operations. Meanwhile, progress on the current phase of the Star Factory expansion continues to move at a rapid clip. The tower nose cone section of the building appears to be nearly ready for exterior cladding. The roofers also look to be nearly ready to begin working on this area as well. Down at the launch site, representatives from Fish and Wildlife Services returned early Wednesday morning. They seemed to focus on the areas around the orbital launch pad, likely inspecting the impact of the water spraying into the wetlands during the previous day's test of the deflector system. Workers were also seen doing additional debris cleanup out at the wetlands as they have been much for the past week or so. Over by the test stand tank farm, crews have begun installing rebar as reinforcement for the new concrete wall that is being built along Highway 4 in this location. This new wall should provide significantly better protection from flying debris for the parking lot across the street. New rebar can also be seen atop the new wall, separating the test stand tank farm from the nearby wetland, indicating that the wall will be getting taller in the coming days. On the former landing pad, crews have begun assembling suspected pipe stands. These new structures are expected to be used to support the piping that will be needed to integrate new horizontal cryogenic storage tanks. Those new tanks will be installed on the new foundations that were previously poured here. At Massey's, the ship 27 aft section turned test article was removed from the stress test stand, likely having completed its intended tests. Nearby, the new warehouse and office building has had a lot of its steelwork already installed. On Thursday morning, the ship quick disconnect was detached from ship 25. A short time later, the access platform was extended and crews went out to cover the ports on the ship to keep them clear from dust and debris. Then, once the workers were safely away, the arm was swung out and the chopsticks lifted Ship 25 once again. The vehicle was lifted clear of the booster and rotated over before once again being placed onto its awaiting transport stand. Back over at the build site, Ship 32's mid-lock section made its way to the staging area outside High Bay less than two days after the previous stacking. That night, Ship 26 was lifted off of Test Stand B and transferred to its awaiting transport stand. It is not yet clear if this was planned or due to an issue from the static fire. In Florida on Friday, Signet Titan towed Just Read the instructions into Port Canaveral with Falcon 9 Booster 1062 following its launch of the Starlink Group 6-23 mission. Saturday, Booster 1067 was lifted off the dockside stand and lowered onto the horizontal transporter for its return to Hangar X to be prepared to fly again. Later that day, Megan, one of SpaceX's two Dragon recovery vessels, returned to the Port Canaveral docks following a trip to a dry dock for maintenance and repairs. That evening, Falcon 9 Booster 1080 lit up the Port Canaveral skies as it launched another group of Starlink satellites on their way to low Earth orbit. On Sunday, Booster 1062 was lifted off the deck of Just Read the Instructions and transferred to dockside stands for processing ahead of transport to Hangar X. On Monday, Doug returned to port after successfully recovering both of the fairing halves that were used to protect the satellites from the atmosphere during Saturday's Starlink launch. Early on Tuesday morning, Crosby Skipper towed a short fall of Gravitas back to port along with Falcon 9 Booster 1080 following its fourth launch over the weekend. 
Next, Booster 1062 was transferred to the transporter as SpaceX continues to quickly cycle boosters through dockside processing and keep up with their rapid launch cadence. On Wednesday, Tug Signet Titan and Just Read the Instructions returned to work as they headed back out to sea in support of the Starlink Group 6-25 mission. Thursday morning, the dockside carousel continued to spin as Booster 1080 was lifted off the drone ship and placed onto the now empty stand to be readied for transport. That afternoon, fare and recovery vessel Bob headed back out to sea to join Signet Titan and just read the instructions in support of the next Starlink launch. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you next week, and thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out.